welcome back to Brightside for our Gasparilla 10 Tampa Bay special. I'm Jenny Dean. Are you ready for a big pirate invasion that's going to happen right here in Tampa in a little more than 24 hours? And then there is going to be a parade of pirates like you have never seen before. But before we look forward, we do always like to look back and we're going to go way back to more than a century of tradition behind Gasparilla. Jabari Thomas takes you back to the very beginning. Tampa Bay has celebrated the life and legend of Jose Gaspar for more than 100 years with a large parade and festival known as the Gasparilla Pirate Fest. It's hard to know what's real about the life of Jose Gaspar. Experts seem to believe that he was a Spanish Navy man who turned pirate to spite the government. Mm, true or not, the idea of Gaspar was enough to start Gasparilla in 1904. Ye Mystic Crew of Gasparilla says it was an event to promote the city of Tampa. There was a secret plan to take Tampa in a mock pirate attack with costumed buccaneers on horseback. A couple of years later, the crew used a ship to capture the city, and the pirate vessels got bigger and more elaborate over the years. In modern times, the crew sailing the only fully rigged pirate ship in the world comes from the south end of Hillsborough Bay, followed by hundreds, if not thousands, thousands of boats to take over the city, kidnap the mayor, and demand the key to the city. It is quite the sight to see for sure. It is so exciting to be a part of that. But I gotta tell you, shiver me timbers, it's cold <laughs> out this morning, but everybody's wondering what the forecast is gonna be like tomorrow morning, Grant, and as we go throughout the day tomorrow for the parade. Yeah, so I, tomorrow's gonna be yeah, a little cool, so everyone's gonna be saying shiver me timbers tomorrow morning, just like this morning, but the thing that'll be different about tomorrow, well, in addition to the fact there'll be pirates coming into downtown Tampa, temperatures are gonna warm up really nicely tomorrow. We'll be in the 40s to start, but as that evasion begins, as that flotilla begins to head into downtown Tampa, temperatures will be climbing into the 60s. By around 1 o'clock, we'll be at 66 degrees. We'll round out the day with temperatures in the lower 70s tomorrow afternoon. Now, we will see a little bit of cloud cover roll in. Ah, no worries there. Wind speeds will be up a little bit, though. That'll be something to watch out on the water. We are expecting somewhat of a chop on the bay, so that flotilla will have to be mindful of those conditions out on the bay with wind speeds anywhere between 15 to 20 knots at times. Here's where we start off your morning this morning, though. Jenny's in downtown Tampa. Temperatures are at 49 degrees. She's got several layers on. You'll probably want those, too. 54 in St. Pete. We've got 40s in a lot of other places, even some 30s over the nature coast. Let's get you into your Friday over the next 12 hours. A cooler day today with high temperatures leveling off in the middle 60s. Jenny, back out to you. Well, it sounds like it's going to be perfect weather for the parade, but you know, people aren't just thinking about the weather. When you get hundreds of thousands of people gathering in one general area, um, they're going to be fighting traffic to get to the festivities. And of course, we want to get you here as simple as possible. Brightside Sarah Rosario brings you up to speed with what you need to know if you're coming to Tampa. With more than 300,000 people expected to line the streets of Bayshore for Gasparilla, unfortunately, with the invasion of pirates comes the invasion of traffic. Let me bring you up to speed on what you can do to avoid traffic hassles and options for places to park. Getting around during Gasparilla, especially if you're in downtown Tampa or you want to get here to Bayshore Boulevard, it's definitely not easy. With pirates tying down the bay and dozens of road closures, it's best to plan ahead so you can enjoy the festivities. If you're trying to find a place to park, the city of Tampa recommends prepaying for parking and reserving your spot in one of eight downtown Tampa garages. From there, you may want to consider taking the free Jolly Trolley. With more than 50 road closures, the parade begins at Bay to Bay and Bayshore and ends near Ashley Drive and Cash Street in downtown Tampa. If you live close, consider walking using those e-scooters or even bike share. If you have to drive, you may want to carpool and stay up to date with street closures on your phone. The city of Tampa has partnered with transportation apps like Park Mobile, Waze and Uber to make sure that parade goers have the latest street closures available. 
Finally, you can also try parking in some of the neighborhoods that line the streets here along Bayshore Boulevard, but be careful because towing will be enforced. So be sure to read those signs very carefully. Watch out for pedestrians again and the barricades posted and have fun. All right, you can also use the Tico streetcar for free. I love taking the streetcar. It's going to be running from 8 a.m. until 2 a.m. So you can park your car at some of the parking garages or lots in Ybor City, then just hop on the streetcar. Hart is also offering free bus shuttles from 9.30 to 7 p.m. All you need to do is head to 10tampabay.com. You can find out more information about that. That would really help you a lot if you really don't want to deal with all of the hassle of being in and around the parade route. Okay, so whether you're a regular and you know the drill, you know what to do when you come down here, or whether this is your first time, we still like to get the details and the reminders, and that is why we have Mick and Stephanie here from Event Fest. You guys have been doing this for many years now, and um, what are some last-minute reminders that you have for people um, that, that they may need to know, just some things that we need to be aware of when we come down here? Absolutely. Thanks for having me, and you totally touched on it. We um, love the shuttles and such that come in. It's such um, a way to decongest Bayshore and the traffic um, down here. So I always recommend those downtown garages and then to walk on over. Um, you're talking about fighting those crowds. One of the ways that we try to help people with the ability to do that is by offering some reserved seating options, which we still have some available. Those are available at gasparillatreasures.com. They range from simple reserved bleacher seats to fully catered buffet and sort of a VIP experience. And then when does everything really get underway? I mean, things really get started in the morning, right? Absolutely. So people definitely are out here when our crew is out here early in the morning, kind of holding down that spot for their family and friends. Um, but the day technically opens on Bayshore at noon. That's when we have some different sponsor activities and things that get started. And then the parade, of course, starts at 2 o'clock. And the invasion happens, too, right around then, too, right at noon or 11.30? What? Yeah, so the invasion leaves Ballast Point earlier in the morning, um, just after 11. And then it docks at the Tampa Convention Center at 1 p.m. So exciting. And I know you guys had some last minute reminders. We are seeing tons of people out here on Bayshore <laughs> this morning. People loving to get their run in, their biking in. I know they're closing down Bayshore tonight at 10, but it's not really for people who are out to exercise. Absolutely. So we close um, Bayshore both sides of the street tonight at 10 o'clock, as you mentioned. And we just ask for um, the folks who are maybe on scooters or bikes or wanting to get their morning run in to choose an alternate route for tonight and for tomorrow. We have so many things with the event of this magnitude, so many different vehicles moving barricades and tents and different things around. It's just we want to make sure that safety is our number one priority and we just ask that pedestrians and such, if you could stay off Bayshore just for another, you know, 24 hours um, until we get through this, get through the cleanup and then you can have it back on Sunday. <laughs> yes, but get out here and enjoy the festivities. It is so much fun. We have our <laughs> pirates here joining us and by the way, I'm letting the mayor know I'm fully with the pirates. You know, I'm, we're going to invade Tampa tomorrow and we are going to have a blast. But I know, Megan, you mentioned safety is a priority. It's something that is always top of mind when it comes to Gasparilla. The parade, of course, all about the fun, but it is important to be responsible. So I want to go back to Caitlin and Frank. They are in studio yes. and they've got three things. They got three <laughs> things that you need to know about staying safe this weekend. Hong Kong. Beep, beep, hello, yeah. Safety first. Fun is a close second, though, but uh, we want to chat about boat safety. Yeah, it sounded like a boat out there. That was a truck or Could a boat. The Coast Guard will be out in full force during tomorrow's boat parade to reduce any chance of accidents out there. They'll be enforcing safety zones, other regulations, too. Any vessels without a motor or under 10 feet long are not allowed in that boat parade. Jet skis also are banned. Yeah, see, when you say it and you point your finger, that really emphasizes it right there. Extra patrols will also be on the ground along the parade route tomorrow. The Tampa Police Motor Unit says they will be all hands on deck, as you would imagine, before, during, and even after celebrations. They'll have multiple units out to monitor the crowds, and officers are also trained to look for alcohol-related offenses like 
underage drinking and drunk driving. And law enforcement leaders say you should have a plan in place in case you get lost in the crowd. Police suggest if you bring your kids with you that you take a photo of them, even give them some contact information in case they get lost or separated. And if you go in a group, pick a designated meeting spot ahead of time. Always a good idea. Police encourage you to reach out if you notice anything suspicious. If you see something, say something. And we've got the beads on this morning. The yeah. beads, a popular thing to have on out there. The popular beads thing popping. to throw. But you don't want to throw them in the water. Jenny, keep it clean out there. That is absolutely right. We are going to talk more about that after the break because it is so important that you do your part to help clean up before you even leave all of the festivities, making sure that you're cleaning up. And then, of course, Caitlin has a story that you are not going to want to miss. We will be right back. The big parade is coming up on Saturday, and this is the newest addition to this year's Gasparilla. Coming up on Brightside, we're going to take you on the ship for a sneak peek. to the mayor. Oh boy, this is what led up to this weekend's Gasparilla invasion. Pirates from Eumistic Crew descended upon City Hall earlier this week. They went to take Mayor Jane Castor hostage. Of course, she met with them to try and negotiate a peaceful surrender of the city. But of course, they're not willing to do that. Their message, surrender or face the invasion. And guess what? The mayor is going to have to face the invasion tomorrow. And of course, you're going to see some famous faces at Gasparilla tomorrow. WWE Hall of Famer Nature Boy Ric Flair will be the Grand Marshal for the parade. Flair has a home in Tampa and joining him in the Gasparilla Honorary Community Hero is Sergeant Major Matt Parrish, who is a Green Beret. So it should be a truly special time and a good time at Gasparilla of course means getting into costume and it's marked by of course the beads everybody loves getting the beads but as Brightside anchor Frank Wiley shows us many times these necklaces they wind up getting into the water a parade of pageantry sails through Tampa Bay around this time every year pirates ships and good times comes with it also tradition brings trash Bunches of beads gifted during Gasparilla. Sometimes the necklaces, for whatever reason, are tossed into the water. It litters the surface, eventually sinking to the bottom, where it looks like ships wrecked. Enjoy the event, but do so responsibly. Our actions matter. People's choices matter. Melissa Dude runs volunteer services at the Florida Aquarium. Our marine life can get entangled in that debris in the beads, or they can ingest it, mistake it for food. So, a couple times a year, volunteer divers dig out what they can find. Whatever beads they don't grab, in a roundabout way, makes it to your stomach. They start to decompose, and when they do, they break down and they start leaching chemicals. If animals are ingesting these plastics, and then it's going to bioaccumulate up the food chain, right? So we're one of the top predators. We eat some of the fish. Enough to motivate most folks to do good by not littering. For those who want to do better, there's this. Any beads that you collect along the parade route or through the festivities, if you bring them back to the aquarium, you can donate them back to us. And what we will do is give you half off your admission to come in. The idea, show you up close that our wildlife deserves to be treasured. In Tampa, Frank Wiley, 10 Tampa Bay. And it's not just beads in the water. There's also, of course, the litter on the streets. Keep Tampa Bay beautiful. They are ready to get out and help clean everything up after all the fun. Each year, the group works with volunteers and the city to pick up the beads and the trash all along Bayshore Boulevard and, of course, the nearby streets and neighborhoods. The cleanup starts Sunday morning, bright and early at 7.30 a.m., and they still need volunteers, but they are asking you to register. We have a link for you to do that right at 10 Tampa Bay.com. All right, girls just want to have fun. Isn't that the truth? Well, the Bonnie Reed crew, they are ready to celebrate Gasparilla in style and on a new ride this year. Brightside's Caitlin Lockerbie met up with one of the founding members of that a Pirates of the Pirate Queens. 
Make way for a new float in this year's Gasparilla Parade. The Bonnie Reed crew will be cruising down Bayshore on this new pirate ship. I'm going to stand up here. <laughs> in fact, my name is on this bead hook here. Camille Matthews helped found the crew in 1994 and was behind the push for this new and improved float that artist Jason Hullfish brought to fruition. We've been working on this for about a year. Uh, really close with the crew, obviously, but you know, from design to build to fabrication to finished float, that's about what it took. Well, it's an all-female crew, so I survived that. Putting front and center, the pirates the crew represents, Aunt Bonnie and Mary Reed. We have the two female pirates up here. That was the important part. We have wood, steel, PVC, fiberglass, so it's all that combined. You can't miss this, floating down Bayshore. The audience is so fun. They always seem to love the music and of course beads. Pro tip from this pirate if you want to catch the most treasure. If they want to score a lot of beads, uh, the best thing to do is have the names of the crews hold them up. We're number 38. Just a heads up. <laughs> yes, so if you hold up Bonnie Reed crew, you will be getting a lot of beads from okay. the crew. When we come back, we are going to be finishing up our special Gasparilla show here in 10 Tampa Bay with a pirate from the mystic crew of Gasparilla. We'll be back. Yes, we are. And of course, what would Gasparilla be without? Pirates! Arr. Bob Kelly is joining me with the mystic crew of Gasparilla. Bob, how long have you been a part of Gasparilla? This is my 30th year. 30 years. What's your favorite part? I still love the invasion. You know, seeing all the boats out on the bay, you know, all the people coming in. It's just, it's amazing to see it from the Gasparilla ship. It's even more amazing to see it from overhead. I think it's truly special because it's so unique to Tampa that we have this type of celebration and that we just love pirates. Well, and you note that, you know, even with the celebrations we've had with the lightning, with the bucks on the water, no places like this in the entire country. So this is what's wonderful to show off Tampa and show off the waterfront the way we do. Absolutely. We've got about 30 seconds. Any last minute tips for all these part time pirates that become pirates for one day out of the year and come down to celebrate? Pace yourself. <laughs> You know, you don't have to start drinking at eight o'clock in the morning. It's, it's a long day. If you're going to be on the water, captaining a boat, stay sober, be safe, get everybody home safely tomorrow. Yes, let's do that. And of course, no beads in the bay. Exactly. We want to keep our beautiful bay clean and nice for many Gasparillas to come. That's Bob, thank you so much. We look forward to the big invasion tomorrow. I know you're probably not going to sleep tonight at all. You guys are so busy. Between I'm already us. dressed. <laughs> you're it's anyway, thank you so much. And before we go, we do want to put up a QR code on our screen so that you can find out everything you need to do. All you need to do is hold your phone up and scan it on your phone camera, and that takes you straight to our Gasparilla guide that covers everything from event schedules to parking, where to find bathrooms, and so much more. You guys, thank you so much for joining us out here along Bayshore Boulevard, beautiful Bayshore, for our special uh, Gasparilla. Gorilla Bright Side Show on 10 Tampa Bay. We hope you have a safe and wonderful day and weekend. And of course, for the Gasparilla invasion tomorrow. We'll see you then.